This morning's Bible reading is taken from Psalm 118, verses 15 to 16. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. So we come to Psalm 118 verses 15 and 16, which is part two, the second week of the anthem of the church. And what we've been doing is we've been looking at messianic images out of Psalm 118. If you remember last week, we were focusing on the right hand of God. And what we were saying last week is that looking at verses 15 and 16, there is a context and the context is that of victory now we did say that some people don't particularly like that concept of victory but nevertheless it is there in the psalm and in its immediate context it's about the victory of the king who goes off to war and comes back bringing prisoners and the spoils of war there's another context that we said last week, which is the Calvary context. And we imagine and think there about Jesus and his victory, his ransom, his salvation. We also said that there was a further context, and that was the eternal context in glory, when the final consummation of the victory of the Lord is there in Revelation 15. We find that the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb all come together and the language is the same, if not similar, as that we find in Exodus and what we find in this psalm. So we've said really that this particular psalm and verses 15 and 16 has victory in its focus and what I'd like to do this morning is to talk about not about victory not about the victory context but living the victorious life now before you tune out I know that some of you already may think oh here we go victory again but there is some really important things to think about in terms of a victorious life, which really these passages in this psalm will draw out for us this morning. But before we come to that, let's just pray. Lord, will you place your hand upon your word as we come to it? Will you minister to us by your Holy Spirit as we come to your word? And will you waken in us, Lord, by your Spirit, a renewed revelation of the Lord Jesus? And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to look at three particular things as we think about victorious living and we've already said in the songs and in the tear fund videos that we were uh, looking at this morning that there were those three particular themes if you remember that of focus that of faith and that of faithfulness well we're going to pick these up because these come to us directly out of these passages now i'm going to read the passage again um, it was good that we had a reading, uh, but I would like to read the passage again to us. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. 
And the focus of this anthem, this song or these songs of salvation is victory. You only have to look at the language that's found here to discover this is victory language. And what kind of a language is it that we find there? It's praise. It's the language of victorious praise. Now just imagine yourself there as the king comes back from battle. As the king comes back with the glory or the, uh, the train in his wake. Comes back with the spoils of war. This is what the psalmist wants us to imagine. And I know that for some of us, ideas of victory and military exploits don't sit too comfortably. But don't throw the psalm out because of that reason. This is a, a victory psalm and the psalmist wants us to hear that and know that. And why is he doing that? Because he's seeking to inspire hope in the people of God. So there in the midst of this, there is the language of praise. Valiantly, exalted, valiantly, the right hand of of the Lord. You can't get much more praising than that. You can't get much more direct than that. You can't get much more prominent than that. This is a, a language of victorious praise that the people of God have been found on the winning side, under the protection and the care of the King. Are you under the protection and the care of King Jesus this morning? Or have you placed yourself somewhere else? Are you the kind of person that resorts very quickly to moaning and complaining about life? Well, this psalm is for you. It's to inspire hope in you. It's to inspire a language of praise. It's to come under the authority of the king. It's to come on the protection of the king. It's to come under his provision. It's to see him as being the victorious king in the midst of life's struggles. This psalm's for you this morning, my dear brother and my dear sister. So it's the language of praise, not the language of of defeat, not the language of complaints, not the language of murmuring, not the language of backbiting, but the language of praise. And it's not just any old language of praise. It's not just praise for the sake of praise. It's praise that finds its focus in the King. Get that. Praise that finds its focus in the person of the King. Where's your praise directed this morning? Is it to your own good deeds? Is it to the good deeds of your church? Is it to your own achievements? Your own actions? Or is your praise focused on the presence of of the king because it isn't praise unless it's focused there so there we have just a, a focus there a focus in the midst of this victory anthem of the church the church in the old testament the church in the new testament and the church today is your focus is your language is your praise in the person of the King Jesus. Hallelujah. There it is. Simple. There in the psalm. I hope you're following me this morning. I'm sitting down. But in my heart I'm standing praising. Hallelujah. And it's wonderful in our day to explore what it looks like. 
to be a praising people that's got very little to do with our circumstances. One of the things that I've been doing recently over the last few weeks is to give myself to reading about Dietrich Bonhoeffer and to discover the kind of world that he was immersed in during World War II and during Hitler's regime in Germany and the suffering that came about at the hands of Hitler towards the confessing church but always in Bonhoeffer's heart and mind was the focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his praise of him that wasn't particularly uh, infused by those circumstances that he found himself in but infused by what he read in the word of God praise of our king here's another thing that I want us to think about in the anthem of victory in the anthem uh, this song of the church in the Old Testament as well as today the f there's faith here so there's focus here but there's faith here what do I mean by that well there's a response why are they singing in the first place it's the response of glad hearts there's a response towards what the king has done hallelujah where's your faith this morning what's it founded on What's it built on? This isn't just any old faith. And you might come across people who say, well, I wouldn't be where I am today without my faith. But if you inquire a little bit closer about that faith and ask, is that faith founded upon the Lord Jesus? Well, yes, they might say. Is it founded upon his work on the cross when he redeemed mankind from sin. Oh well, I wouldn't go that far. Is it founded on this Jesus who was raised from the dead bodily? Well, yeah, I believe in the resurrection. But for me, it's about a spiritual resurrection. Uh, and if I'm not quite able to get there, I believe that the disciples saw it in that way, even if it didn't happen the way that the Bible says it. Really? What's your faith founded on? Not some hearsay. Not some idiotic thinking. But founded on the King what the king has done what he's done at the cross what he's done in terms of being raised from the dead and how he has raised you too from the dead and not only planted your feet on the rock that it says in the old testament but seated you in heavenly places what's your faith found on this morning church this is why I get so passionate about having a faith that's founded on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's him, the king, or some shallow backwater that gives us no hope nor reason to live. Faith, the response of the hearts of the people in this psalm. Can't you see it? They're singing glad songs of salvation. What are you singing this morning? Are you singing about Jesus? About all that he's done for me? About his love for you? That would take him from the highest heaven and bring him down into the lowest hell and live amongst the dirt and the dust of this world to raise you up and seat you with him. 
because your sins have been forgiven, you've been ransomed and redeemed. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Oh, what a hymn that is. And there we've got reason for our praise. So there's focus. There's faith. We found that in the songs of creation this morning. We found that in the tear fun videos this morning. And here's a third thing that we find in the psalm. But we also find in those videos and in those hymns. That there's something here about faithfulness. Is the anthem of this passage. Or faith is the faithfulness is the uh, the, the, the song that they sing about too in Psalm 118. What do I mean by that? Well, look at the passage. Victory is fixed in the hearts of these people. How do you know that, Graham? Because the Bible tells me. Let's read it again. What it says here. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. Two words there that tells us about how victory is fixed in the lives of God's people. Tents. A dwelling place. Where? Under the protection of of the king under the the covenant of the king under his security under his provision under his presence they're living in the realm of the king we might say the kingdom of god we might say the presence of the lord Faithfulness. They're rooted there. They're rooted in this place. Rooted. Under the authority of the king. That's where all faithfulness comes from. That's where all response comes from. That's where all faith comes from. That's where our singing comes from. Our praising. That's where all life comes from under the authority of the king tents tells us of dwelling places of people putting down their roots of people living out their lives under the authority of the king there it is and the second word righteous right in hearts and right in action there it is. Faithfulness again. Righteous. Doing righteous acts because hearts have been made right. There it is. Hallelujah. Are you righteous this morning? Are you faithful this morning to the Lord in the midst of our present circumstances? Or are you moved by the circumstances we find ourselves in? Have they got power over you? Or are you rooted in the authority of the king? And in the identity, the righteousness that he has provided for you? They are fixed here. They are under the security of this King, they're dwelling here in this psalm under the jurisdiction, the kingdom, the rule, and the reign of this king. You see, faithfulness is there. There it is. In a nutshell, they're living out their lives with faithfulness with righteousness 
being planted in a place under the authority of the king. Now I want to take those three things, the focus of the anthem of the church, the faith of the anthem of the church, the faithfulness of the anthem of the church. And I want to direct them more profoundly and more poignantly by asking some questions. What's your language this morning? Is it a language of praise? Can you find enough in the scriptures, enough in depending upon the Lord Jesus, enough in the love of the Father, enough in the ministry of the Spirit to cause you to sing songs of joy? I would say yes. There is enough there. There's more than enough there. What's your language? This morning, do you think about that carefully? Here's the second poignant, prominent question. Where's your faith this morning? If you look around the world in which we live, I don't have very much faith in a lot of things. I don't have faith in governments, don't have faith in leaders, don't have faith in people per se, don't have faith in regulations, I don't even have faith in myself, but I've got faith in God, yes that's good, but I've got faith that's directed and finds its place in the presence of and in the person of the Lord Jesus. That's where my faith is. That's who holds my heart in his hands. That's who holds my life in his care. He's the one that has the keys of hell and of death. He will appoint my time and it will be the end of life for me in this world. And the entrance into glory. No one else. I will have no faith in anything else except Jesus. Where's your faith? Because if it's not in him, you cannot call yourself a Christian. That sounds harsh. And it's not Graham that's saying this. But everything within the fibre of the scriptures points to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we've got the idea of focus, praise, of language. I've asked you the question, what's your language? We've got the concept, the idea, the, the pattern, the thinking about faith. Who do you have faith in? And out of that comes our response, our faithfulness, our living the life of a believer here below. Are you living a victorious life? And what I mean by that is this. Is your life shaped by the Lord Jesus and by that shaping you move out and into the world responding to needs, caring for the poor, raising up those who are downtrodden, speaking out against injustice, comforting those that have no hope, disturbing those that have power, because it's here. Faithfulness is here. What is your faithfulness measured by? Some concept? Some other world view? Or is your faithfulness rooted under the authority of the king? 
We could do a lot more this morning. We've only skirted round the edges of this passage, really. I could do with another couple of weeks to open it up, but we won't. Because Duncan is going to be preaching next week on blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I hope these thoughts of last week and this week have been helpful. I hope the whole psalm has been helpful to you. And I hope this morning you've been able to garner and gain something from opening up the theme again of the anthem of the church. Because this should be our anthem. Focus, faith, faithfulness, addressing the needs of the world that exist around us. Now at the beginning we said that people shy away from victory. But this is what it looks like from the pages of scripture. To give us hope in our present circumstances. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.